Dear viewers and learners, I am so very happy to be able to welcome you today for this session. We will be able to discuss today uh, one very important paper in our master's course uh, that is British drama, we call it MEG2. In this paper we have uh, put together so very important text as far as the understanding of uh, British drama is concerned right from uh, Chaucer onwards we, we try to generate an orientation into how the British drama evolved, how it culminated and how it captured the various themes and dimensions of the then day uh, socio-economical cultural life. Today we will uh, uh, besides uh, that we will discuss a very important text uh, uh, Christopher Marlowe's the, the play that, that has a very historical relevance, Dr. Faustus, uh, will discuss as to how uh, the, this play continues to capture uh, imagination even after 400 years of its uh, production. So today's uh, lecture, let me begin with this, that we'll discuss with you how uh, Dr. Faustus and the Elizabethan age captured the idea, the themes and the various issues of life. We'll also discuss the textual diversity of Dr. Faustus in terms of how many people played that, how it was a major success as far as its global impact is concerned. We'll also discuss the rise of Elizabethan comedy and tragedy. During this time, uh, the, there was a paradigm shift. If you look at the overall uh, rubric of Elizabethan drama, we find that there are various trends emerging. Uh, besides tragedy, there is an element of comedy also. We'll also discuss Marlowe's contribution to drama. We'll, we'll find out was there a real Faust. We'll discuss uh, in, in a meaningful way the, the characters uh, as they come and, and perform in this play. We'll, we'll uh, take into account uh, how this, this play is a build-up on miracle and morality plays, mystery plays. We'll also discuss Elizabethan tragedy, the Senecan influence. I have plans that will, I will discuss heroic character of Dr. Faustus. And finally, we'll look at how Dr. Faustus appears to us, you know, it culminates as, as a Renaissance play. So many analysts, commentators have called Dr. Faustus as a Renaissance child. So we'll, we'll look at, analyze and probe into all these areas. If we look at uh, the, the, the uh, uh, scenario of Elizabethan drama, we find that there was a shift and that shift uh, can be located in the uh, you know, audience. Audience no longer want to uh, think themselves as the pawns of gods or of fate. If we look at the place before, uh, Dr. Faustus, we find that there is a sense of difference as far as characterization and as far as the, the theme is concerned. It, now, like before this, we, we used to have focus, emphasis largely on predestination. If you look at, say, Sophocles, Oedipus Resk, you must have read that in the course of your uh, readings. You, you find that, you know, a character is bound to die a particular kind of death. He is bound to marry his own mother and then die a very pitiable death. So predestination, uh, Calvinism, you know, is, is, is a way of, uh, you know, theme, is, is a predominant theme. So we, we look at how now there is, a, uh, in the Elizabethan age, there is a sense of uh, shift from there and audience feel that there is a component of free will also and human being should look beyond uh, as as merely if from being as pawns and as as you know kind of puppets in the hands of fate we we also find that there is a clash between predestination and free will as we discussed drama became a trend because of its social stability you know if we look at the elizabethan age this age uh, 
in, in comparison was much more stable as far as socio economical culture life was concerned queen elizabeth was not challenged from any corner so we find that in in the uh, uh, theatrical situation there is a use of theology geography and science before this you don't find many uh, such instances where dramatists would allude to or where they would use some scientific influence uh, you know references to geography or theology here uh, uh, you you may also note this that it is it is this time only that we find a development of proscenium uh, and as far as the themes and concerns are themes and uh, issues we find that anti-semitism there is a sense of uh, anti-jew uh, arguments there in in place we'll discuss that in the course of our discussion today we find that there is a definite element of senecan uh, way of dramatizing things and revenge plays there are supernatural elements so this is how elizabethan drama comes to uh, a new shape new dimension and captures uh, the audience's uh, mind and imagination we also find that how iambic pentameter with five two syllabic uh, units you know it, it becomes the uh, tone uh, you you know that how chaucer began to talk about this in his in his works now if in the dramatic tradition also we find that this iambic pentameter becomes very important we find that blank verse which was usually restricted to characters of noble origin becomes very important use of disguise will feel will feel will see how uh, in dr foster's you find that various characters you know uh, taking uh, different shapes using disguise as as a dramatic innovation and we find uh, lots of asides soliloquies and private conversations to be able to connect to the audience to be able to connect to uh, the the audience to take them along to 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 reveal what what in happens transpires in the mind of the uh, uh, the characters, various character, and the the protagonist in particular, we we find that there is a rise of uh, professional uh, theater activity, professional plays. We find that there are two major houses: Lord Admiral's Men and Lord Chamberlain's Men. Jo Dr. Foster used to perform in this Lord Admiral's Men theater company, and we know very famous Lord Chamberlain's Men, where Shakespeare made his uh, mark, and and you know he became immortal. Uh, this display is no less uh, important in the sense that we continue to refer to it, derive uh, influences, and if if you look at how if you, it will be meaningful if you look at Marlowe's. Uh, a uh, role here he, he was one of the you know many university wits also when when we say university wits is a key term key university means those people who who oriented themselves trained themselves in various university departments and acquired this uh, the 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 field of uh, drama you know started working on this field of drama with a sense of expert and understanding with a sense of academic orientation so we find that he from 1564 he was born and you know uh, he 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 prepared a very strong pathway marlowe's role has to be understood in in the sense that he he comes and prepares a strong pathway in terms of characterization in terms of sequencing of uh, you know the following of uh, dramatic unities and then strong characterization is concerned so we find that how in the scope of five years he produces very important uh, theatrical dramatic narratives you, you, if you take it that into account you find that Tamburlaine comes in 1587 1587 dr foster's comes in 1586 the jew of malta edward one and the massacre of paris so in the scope of five years we find that uh, Christopher Marlowe is able to create a tremendous impact on the British scene and then you know take everything by storm if if I'm referring to university wits I think it will be meaningful if I take into account uh, the other names we find that that there was Christopher Marlowe uh, we find Robert Green Thomas Nash who are from from Cambridge University John Lyley Thomas Lodge 
and George Peel were from Oxford University and the literary historians include Thomas Kidd also who was not from any university but he had the same kind of intensity uh, as these university wits. So you know we, it is good that you also probe as to how in, in, ten, in togetherness and how, how in isolation these university wits captured various themes and, and brightened the uh, stage. If, if I bring all of you to the introduction of this play, I would like to begin with how chorus comes and uh, orients the audience, gives a brief bibliography of Foster's up to this point. It, there's a detailed sense of description of, of the birth, studies in Wittenberg, excellence at disputation and arrogance. You see, uh, Dr. Faustus is remarkable because you know he 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 has all the knowledge on his side, academic knowledge, university knowledge, but then he is still not a sense of com uh, complacent with that, satisfied with that, and he wants to overcome all other knowledge. That is, we will discuss how he uh, tries his hand with necromancy and how he indulges into other uh, domains. The Overarching aspirations, the way he wants to conquer the skies, build up castles into the sky, bridges across them, and the way he wants to become emperors of emperors. So this is how you know this this play unfolds, and you know the, the, he has reached to the he has reached the top of the studies of the Renaissance University can train you in and necromancy and desire to be worshipped as God. This is very important. If you look at the themes, we find that since. Uh, there is a rem uh, we, we discussed that how Dr. Faustus is, is a step above of the miracle morality and mystery plays. If, if, when the, the drama was played within the church premises and the, the clergy people, the, the church staff used to be the or, or play all the characters. We find here that you know there, there is a you know though there is a you know description of seven sins. Uh, seven cardinal sins as we refer to those uh, here like you know there's a description but that description uh, kind of unfolds in a different way revitalization and damnation all the you can say biblical themes also come here we find that power as, is depicted demonstrated as a corrupting factor dr foster's has all the qualification but his ambition but his sense of urge to acquire more and more power with, with, with and also the absolute power you see the way he wants to the um, you know i as i talked about emperors emperor of emperors the way you know i would you know acquire all the wealth the most precious of wealth you know so the power as a corrupting factors and man's divided nature divided nature in the sense that there is a sense of dilemma all the time there is a sense of uh, when once you have overpowered or captured this world there is a ten tendency to go to the other world and do the same and whether you want knowledge and power or you want complete dominance and and complete control over this world and beyond so these are largely we can sum up how the themes you know uh, come to us you know, it will be meaningful like if you look at the various characters. I told you about Dr. Faustus who is the main uh, character who the, the whole story revolves around him. But there are others also, Valdez and Cornelius, two friends of Faustus who are both magicians. We have to look at Mephistopheles, a devil whom Faustus summons with his magical powers. Chorus. We talked about how chorus acts as, as a kind of character where, where a group of singers come and take the audience along with the various vicissitudes and, and the changes in the, in the dramatic discourse. And we find old man who comes towards the end of the play and then you know, talks about how uh, Faustus has done a wrong thing and he has to now come back and be remorseful and repent. And we, all, we have a good angel also, a spirit who urges Faustus to uh, repent for his pact with Lucifer. We have an evil, evil angel, a spirit that serves as the counterpart to God angel. We have Lucifer, we have Wagner. In terms of other characters, we have Clown, Robin, Ralph, and the Pope, Emperor Charles V, Knight, Bruno, Duke of Van Holt. 
so these are the various characters who come in between and give give a sense of dramatic unity and allow the theme to emerge and culminate into where it stands today uh, so like let's look at how dr foster's you know magic is seen as an extension of science almost the natural climax to a university career he, when he acquires and masters all the academic knowledge then he begins to venture into the so called like a little hazy domain necromancy magic and he says he, he sees that as a natural extension of science he's arrogant he's pompous and he becomes the devil worshiper in the course of time what has marlow done to make him likable you see this this is very important if you read the text if you read through the dialogues this is very important that you are reading the primary text the dialogues and whenever uh, like he speaks to other characters he speaks to the audience through his uh, sides and soliloquies you are able to capture how uh, he he reveals his inner what what makes him so very impactful likable what is like if he is a kind of parallel devil what 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 is so important what is so you can say universal in dr foster this is something that we'll look at foster makes a number of references so when we are talking about it uh, dr foster as a renaissance play we need to look at how dr foster you know there are references to america which had just been open to the europeans as a great source of new gold so there is a kind of reference allusions to new knowledge for example as far as geography is concerned uh, earth as a round place or as a flat surface there is a, there are reference to, to that so when when the devil appears it is too ugly Do, dr foster sends his away to reappear in the form of a franciscan friar mephistopheles answers foster's questions about why he came about him. what he wants and about the hell and the place of lucifer and the devil in it foster agrees to deal with and he will sell his souls 24 years for ordering mephisto phillis to do whatever he wants so that that sense of bartering takes place so uh, mephist uh, dr foster sets up a kind of deal with with mephisto phillis to kind of achieve his ambition to to kind of go into the domain that he was always imagining beyond the uh, worldly knowledge beyond the university academic knowledge there is there's a remarkable sense of the uh, kind of dilemma that he passes through and and this 24 hour 24 year kind of deal where he says that i after that i will allow you to take away my soul so tells the audience that he wants to become the emperor of uh, empress joins africa to to spain and like the persian emperor uh, who made a bridge of boats across the Hel hellespont to enable his army to cross into greece so this is how foster's plans to sell his soul and is again advised by the good and evil angels and the evil angel says he will be rich if he does so he gives his soul to mephistopheles he becomes a spirit in form and substance with great power he wants to understand how hell fits under heaven foster also asks mephistopheles about the shape of the universe and mephistopheles gives a piecemeal version of what he was and then accepted ge geocentric version he tells foster nothing that he does not already know this is very important that there there is a sense of desire in in dr foster to acquire more and more knowledge but in the course of discussion that he uh, engages with uh, uh, with mephistopheles there is nothing new that comes about so a kind kind of falsified side of mephistopheles and the uh, necromancy and the 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 world of black magic is revealed here if you look at the dramatic aspects you know marlo deliberately brings on uh, the seven deadly sins from the traditional mor medieval morality plays and in the morality plays there would be real and these would be real and frightening and here you know once you know you look at the <clears throat> or the traditional miracle morality plays you find that you the you know uh, the audience would bring to kind of feel threatened and uh, they would be afraid when they see say sloth or gluttony or lechery you know all those uh, deadly sins that we we all remember so but here you know the when marlow introduces them these seven deadly sins are used as an entertainment trope and they they are they come as a very entertaining influence uh, it is it's up to you how do you see that so you, you know you have to answer this question yourself whether you agree with that yes or no 
for a medieval person, hell was a real place. Your soul was at stake. For Foster's hell is a fable. Foster's with his academic orientation, he does not believe in the, uh, in the idea and the metaphor of hell. He, he, he thinks that is a story. For Mephistopheles, hell is a state of mind. For Marlowe, it's a mind. It's a state of mind or real. This is something that you, you know, I think this is something that Marlowe begins to impress upon his audience that it is something that we create, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and in terms of our own sufferings, the hell or heaven is, is fundamentally a state of mind. Faustus tells his friend about the deal he has made with Lucifer and they, and they tell him to repent. And we look at, to, uh, we need to look at his, his sense of achievement, the, the kind of dramatic uh, innovations that he brings in. He achieves in this play with his morality structure and theme, the irrepressible and the wayward hero and the farcical subplot. We ha if we need to look, locate the arrival of the new hero, a fully, fully framed, full, full live, lively character, we find that Marlowe achieves that through the character of Fossus, which, which is like, you know, which is now um, ready for everyone else subsequently to kind of uh, borrow that strength. So we find that he presents poetry and elevated uh, dramatic style. We find that there's enormous sense of rhythm and we talked about uh, ambic pentameter, which is like f five stress and five unstress syllables. And then through the comedy of evil, Mar Mar Marlowe adds a heroic tragedy. Twofold play as a uh, I would like to quote J.P. Brock, Brockbank here, who serves a purpose, of, uh, who says that it serves a purpose for the audience. I quote, in fear we acquiesce uh, in the littleness and the powerlessness of man, and in pity we share his sufferings and endorse his protest. So this is very important. Uh, this, this sense of dilemma is so beautifully portrayed, projected, and negotiated. Uh, the Renaissance, for example, if we, we, we talked about how it is a Renaissance play, inspired the writers of the age to give expressions to the values that Renaissance has brought in its wake. Marlowe also showed his love for the Renaissance spirit. What is the Renaissance? Revival of the Greek Latin learning, revival of a spirit of thinking, skepticism, the, uh, the ability and the tendency to do, do doubt. Uh, the conventional logic, uh, the, the hero of the play is a great renaissance figure. His career may be described as the microcosm of the renaissance humanism. This is very important. When, when we talk about renaissance humanism, we talk about the enlightenment ideals, liberty, equality, fraternity, how, you know, kind of democratization of, of, uh, of, of the uh, British uh, uh, stage. In fact, Marlowe's Faustus has the restless curiosity, a writer's uh, imagination and audacious desires. So this is how uh, in, interest in the exploration of new world, which is, which is, which, you know, kind of, you know, he, he looks to be a traveler, a ceaseless uh, traveler who, who sees no break in his, in his flight with imagination. We find that he deals with in, in, interest uh, in the exploration of a new world, he wants to have power over the spirits. He wants to ransack the ocean for ocean pearls. I told you that he wants to kind of build bridges over the skies. And like all the Renaissance men, Dr. Foster shows his interest to quest for new regions beyond these areas he wants to grasp. If I may quote from America, the Golden Fleece, that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury. So this is how we, we say, you know, if we, you know, I, if I may add to the Renaissance features, the impact, we may say love for books, deep learning was one of the, you know, kind of how you enhance your mind through experience, through um, what other people of, of higher knowledge and wisdom has written. So th there is a description how, how, you know, uh, Dr. Foster's, you know, kind of represents the highest point of that, that spirit, you know, love for books, love for his Aristotle's work, like, you know, all the Greek masters where, you know, you, you Aristophanes, where you have uh, Sophocles, all the dramatists of, of Greek era are, are uh, celebrated. We also know that there is an interest in science, nature and geography, interest in science, you know, you know, I, I was talking about how there is a sense of remarkable interest in new knowledge and, you know, the scientific temper, you know, there, there's ability to uh, probe into the cause and effect relationship. Dr. Foster is always about this. 
We, we, we understand that how Faustus knows the year is divided into two circles over the whole world. When he, it is winter in one cycle, circle, there is summer in the other. So there is, there are, there is a kind of uh, exploration that, that we, we notice in the character of um, uh, Dr. Faustus. We, uh, at one place he says, I would like to quote her, who knows not the double motion of the planets, the first is finished in a natural day. This is how a kind of deep sense of uh, engagement with the weather, with the environment and with the uh, cosmos at large. We find that, you know, if you look at the tragic denouement, we find that Faustus reaches his rebellious or tragic death in Act 5. The nature of his death and attendant torment bespeaks a magnificent tragedy, if not that of a tragic hero. But Faustus' offense can never be pardoned. This is very important. You know, some uh, uh, analysts, commentators say that this is largely a Christian play. Uh, and that, that you know, uh, but, you know, how, what, what are the different dynamics that are being played here? He has to repent. He has to seek pardon. And what makes it even more special is the tragic sense of conflict, tragic sense of dilemma. And this, this uh, you know, does not abate till the very end. Foster seeks an alternate between heaven through the devilish heaven. You know, look at his, uh, you know, during the last hours, he, he kind of, he expresses his desire to meet and embrace uh, the most beautiful lady, uh, Helen, uh, as far as Greek, uh, uh, Greek, uh, Epics are concerned. Uh, I, I would like to quote here what he says. Her lips suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Come, Helen, come, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heavens is in these lips all is dross that is not Helena. This is how, you know, a kind of... He is ready to compromise everything he has for something very, very transient, for something for, for before a beautiful lady, for example, like, you know, the, the transient kind of beauty. And, you know, this, it is only in this play that we have this, you know, was this the, sh the face that launched a thousand ships? So there is a sense of disillusionment also subsequently. Faustus knew that his revolt against go God does not go beyond futile gestures of defiance. But the gesture is not only characteristics but worthy of man given his magnificence. Faustus dies questioning the very validity of human existence. This is very important. And I, I'm, I'm quoting that, why were thou not a creating wanting soul or why is this immortal that thou hast? This soul should fly from me and I be changed unto some brutish beast. Kind of, you know, this, this brings out that, that sense of tragic sense of conflict and clash. All beasts are happy. O soul, be changed into water drops and fall into the ocean, never be found. Uh, I, I, it is important that, you know, very famous scholar on Dr. Foster's Kenneth Golden, the way he, you know, kind of uh, demonstrates, describes the problem that, uh, that is invested into uh, Dr. Foster's. Uh, uh, do, like modern man is the victim of splitting of the will. He rejects Christianity because it would hamper his boundless desires. Yet lie also cannot escape Christianity or at least certain aspects of it. Especially guilt and the sense of sin that leads to despair. The psychological law embodied in the common dictum, genius to madness is, is near allied. Jung found occurring again and again in the sense that the consciousness and the unconsciousness, unconscious elements of the psyche exist in a compensatory relationship. This is how the, the psychological, the neurological kind of situation is brought about by Golden. We find that how Faustus resembles Icarus who attempted as the chorus puts it to mount above Willis reach if morality heroes are self-effacing human beings. Faustus is superhuman in his ambition. He resembles the Renaissance man and in, in many ways the modern man also. Here when we are thinking about uh, creating, you know, clones where we are trying to create uh, uh, kind of driverless cars and then, you know, uh, we are searching for life beyond this planet. This is uh, again a kind of replication of, of Dr. Faustus in many ways. Humanness does not limit Faustus' achievement. Why should lie be limited in powers, 
by the human condition. The, the, you, I'm, I'm quoting from Act 1, Scene 1. Ye, ye art thou still but foster and a man, where his power should reach out. This is very important. So, Dr. Foster's, like all Renaissance men, tried to make impossible possible, very importantly. And then, when he, whatever like he discusses with Mephistopheles, he is trying to kind of bridge the gap, like, and the spirit of inquiry was a dominant trait. Renaissance men loved music, dance, mirth, beauty, all these uh, traits come in in this play. Passion for knowledge, we have already discussed how power was a very important feature. The way he dismissed all subjects and decided to study magic. He believes that a sound magician is a mighty god, which, which is like uh, kind of... Uh, 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 kind of rejected later on for the sake of acquiring knowledge she kind of barters his soul so in terms of dilemma he fosters does not rest in his choice between god and devil but in this inseparable coexistence within this human condition is is important uh, fear of god and damnation and the truth and the trust of the devil emanate from the human condition. This is very important as far as the understanding of uh, tragic dilemma is concerned. He rebels against the limitations of medieval knowledge. We, we discussed how, you know, this clash uh, of um, uh, free will with uh, predestination is willing to chance damnation in order to achieve his goals. The tragedy results when a person is condemned to damnation for a noble attempt to go beyond the petty uh, limitations of humanity. This is how, uh, I, would, I would say that this is how broadly we find that Dr. Foster's uh, description, this play, you know, even after like, you know, four centuries, we find tremendous appeal that he resembles the, uh, the vicissitudes, the aspirations, the hope, hopes and aspirations even if some some of them are far-fetched ones and the dilemma and how there is there's a sense of check so reading um, dr foster's it gives us a sense of how drama drama has evolved right from its uh, incipient days miracle morality and mystery plays and then renaissance drama and how there is a complete culmination of uh, the rise of individual as an autonomous entity when we, we talk about renaissance humanism when we talk about man as like you know the transformation of world transformation of uh, this this universe uh, from theological to uh, homocentric theocentric to homocentric this is i think this is a perfect play to be understood in that sense i would request all our um, students and uh, viewers to to uh, kind of go a little deeper into this you know kind of and and kind of derive strength you know as far as uh, the actual plays is concerned. So in, in your uh, examination, when you are asked how, how this is a uh, morality play, how this is a Christian play, how this is a Renaissance play, you will be able to uh, answer that. So this is important. We would like to kind of uh, wind this up for today and we will come, come again with, with a, another dimension how uh, Faustus is... Uh, tragic dilemma goes to uh, uh, a d new high and and how characterization takes place what are the other dramatic innovations that was tried out by christopher marlowe uh, this is how uh, we will uh, come and connect to you once again thank you very much for today's lecture and i, I would wish all of you a safe secure uh, day thank you very much